from EPAWA Weather Consulting headquartered in North Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. It's Sunday morning to you, another edition of Weather Weeklies, and this is going to be a juicy one. Lots of uh, good information to speak of in here. Uh, well, it depends on your perspective. If you're a snow lover that's been uh, denied and uh, is wondering where, where, the, where winter has been, some of you are getting a teaser today, but uh, I think you're going to get a lot more of the area involved with more substantial cold snow coming forward. Now, this is something I've been talking about for a while. This is not, if you watch these videos every week, uh, and, and these are archived, these are on YouTube, you can go back and check tape. I get a lot of people at the end of the end of December. They're like, "That's it, winter's over. Winter cancel. This this winter's going to be a bust, and uh, we're not going to get any snow, and it's not going to be cold. It's warm. It's ridiculous." Okay, and I said, "Hold your horses," and I gave you a date. I said January twentieth was the magic date. And again, go back and check tape. This isn't something I'm making up here. And listen, I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. But when I hear, when we're, we're doing, giving the long range outlooks and doing these Weather Weeklies videos, and I'm seeing under the comments on the Facebook page and some on Twitter, not really so much Twitter, people behave on Twitter, I don't know why. Uh, on the Facebook page especially, you said people say, hearing things from other sources and they start saying, no, this is a bust, you're full of it. Uh, you got to stop listening to sources that are not credible or even the ones that you think are credible and they're not. You know, it's just. I told you <laughs> January 20th was the magic date. This is not uh, this is not hard to understand, but uh, you know whatever I, I, we're gonna have that all the time. I get that. here's our here's our long range. but this pattern change is coming, folks. This is not speculative anymore. and you can say, well, you just got lucky and guessed. Oh, okay, if you think so. Here is uh, the pattern change coming right around here on the 20th and we have this up and down stuff going on before then. All right, so this is the week ahead. Then we go to slightly above average that we are slightly below average, I'm sorry, between uh, the initial pattern change, and then we get really brutally cold after that once we get into the uh, very tail end of the month into February, and we remain that way going forward. A lot to do with the stratosphere changes that will happen over the past couple of weeks. There's some other things going on uh, we'll cover in this video, but uh, here's that current system, light snow, snow showers, and that uh, we had a map out for that that was uh, very rare when a map is, is almost 100% spot on, and this is one of those cases today. So we're very, very proud of our team for coming up with that map, including uh, Weather New Jersey and Jonathan Carr, which we collaborate with on that map. And, and he, uh, he actually was very aggressive in the South Jersey areas that he cover, covers and uh, was really pushing for that. And it looks like that's going to work out there as well. So good job by him. Uh, we have uh, another little week system coming in here on Thursday night and Friday. I have listed here the 18th. It's actually Thursday night. And they bring some more light snow showers. Not a real big deal, it doesn't look like, but uh, multiple models have it. And then we have the big storm everybody's talking about over the weekend, this would be Saturday night, Sunday, probably next weekend. It could be rain to snow, it could be all snow, it could be a miss, uh, it could be a bunch of different things. But there's, uh, we'll go over those scenarios in this video. And then, of course, the pattern change is 120. Pattern change, and I'll show you what is changing about the pattern exactly in this video also. Okay, and again, well advertised. It's not a surprise to me whatsoever. Okay, uh, winter storm signals are going to come that week following that pattern change storm. We have a pattern change identified here. This is the pattern change storm right here. So if that produces snow, you still have some winter signals after that, maybe one or two in that week following through the 27th. Beyond that, we don't get into winter storm signals. So that's going a little bit too far. I mean, it could be more obviously down the pipeline, but it looks like it's a parade coming here. So we go from, even with this cold the end of the month, I still think, think you end up slightly above average because it started off so mild prior. Uh, it's going to hard to be hard to offset that. Uh, but February as a whole is well below average temperatures with well above average snowfall. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Here's our current storm. Again, this is where was our map from it. I uh, don't think I could have drawn this any better. 
and uh, very proud of uh, the team and, and, uh, and of course, uh, Weather New Jersey collaborates with us. Uh, Jonathan Carr did a very good job with that as well, especially insisting on this area down here uh, be on the higher side. You're going to still get more snow down there. I know some areas only have, oh, well, only got two inches so far. Okay, well, you got more coming in. Uh, this is going on throughout the entire day here. This is looking at uh, this is the uh, high resolution rapid refresh model for tw for 2000 local, which is, of course, 8 p.m. And it's still snowing down here. So it's going to be light snow, but it's going to add up down in these areas. You might have some moderate to heavy snow right along the southern tip of New Jersey and the southern two thirds of Delaware. So that's going on today. Here's the Mount and Julian oscillation pattern going forward. We are now in the circle of death. Uh, which means the Mountain Julian oscillation has no effect on the pattern as far as poleward heat fluxes and it changes the jet and configurations and things like that. The Mountain Julian oscillation will, will not be very relevant over the next couple of weeks. And, and yes, it is going briefly, very weakly into phase four, five, six. Uh, but when it's this weak of a signal, it, it might as well be the circle of death because it's really not going to do anything to the pattern because of other factors that are going to trump it and, and uh, supersede it. Okay, and I'll discuss that too so normally again phase four or five six these are warmer phases but it's such a weak signal if we didn't have these other things working in our favor pattern change wise this would be a bad thing but i don't think it's going to because it's one it's such a weak signal uh and it's propagating eastward toward the colder phases eventually anyway as we get toward the end of the month uh, but uh, this is this is going to be so weak that it's going to be able to be overrun by some other changes in the in the atmosphere. Now here's here's what it looks like on the uh, infrared imagery. Again, there, there's a couple weak systems here. This is out like out in the phase three area. This is out in the phase I don't know, what about phase six or seven. Uh, this was a little stronger out here here in this area. This is just very weak convection and there's no real you can't really point to one area and say one's better than the other they're kind of equally offsetting each other it's really not having an effect on the pattern because of that uh, we had a phase eight signal where it was right out here by the international date line and it was stronger a couple days ago uh, that is now weakened of course into the circle of death so it just means that if you have one area that's really dominant that will affect the wavelengths downstream if it gets a poleward heat flux and changes the patterns downstream because of whatever's going on um, you know in different parts of the world as far as convection on the uh, along the equatorial eastern Pacific, or really uh, equatorial, uh, excuse me, the equator period, not the eastern Pacific. I'm thinking of something else here. Uh, but this is this is the equator area that we're looking at for this uh, for this best convection. There's really no area that's jumping out right now. So that's all that means. So we look at the things that are going to trump that. Well, the Southern Oscillation Index. We talked about this last week. This difference in pressure between Tahiti and Darwin, Australia measures that difference you want these values to be negative and primarily except for a few blips in here like on the 11th and uh, we had a near average here right around the 8th we're primarily negative and the latest value this morning is negative 9.04 so we're seeing a negative uh, uh, SOI for the month of January now this has a about a two-week lag all this tells me is it's just going to be remain cold this helps our trough in the eastern United States this is something that can uh, if the Mount and Julian oscillation is weak, can be uh, your source for a uh, for for that uh, that heat flux and changes in the in the uh, changes in the jet stream configuration that gives you a trough in the eastern United States. That's all this does. So that's one thing it helps. But the bigger thing that helps, of course, is the stratospheric PV split. This was observed. Have we talked about this in the last video? This was observed, not modeled. All right, but this is looking at the current. You have one split vortex here. You have actually a couple. Uh, here about triple vortex there's one two three here. There's one over europe there's one over here in uh eastern asia there's one over canada so there's three vortexes here the Canada, can the north american one's going to actually become the most dominant with time i think and then we go out uh, this is looking at uh the day of the pattern change on the 20th so you can see from the stratosphere strong warming over the poles that what what that does is displace the cold air in the troposphere away from the polar regions down to the lower uh, latitudes in the atmosphere and that's why we get uh, so so much colder and then uh, going out to to the end of the month the very end of the month it's, it hasn't moved it's still here okay and the reason for this is when you have these stratospheric warming episodes these usually lock in and when they split like this when they have this split like this they lock in for a very long period of time usually 45 to 60 days from inception now it's from when the time the the stratosphere actually warms so that's going to take us through the entire month of February and perhaps the first half of March, just from what the stratospheric effects are going to be, okay? So we're going to be locked in this for a while, I think. And here's the tropospheric response. This is, of course, the lower levels where we live. 
And this is right around the pattern change date. Look at this big trough in the east. This is very cold stuff. You got ridging out here in the western United States all the way up into Alaska. Even got a little bit of blocking starting to come into play. Not much, but starting to. Might come in a little bit after that. And then here's a week later. Actually, the end of the month. This is more than a week later. And look at this one. This one's even more. So with this, this is the polar vortex right here, the stratospheric polar vortex. I can draw that right here. Here's a, here's the PV here on the at the end of the month. It, it really doesn't do any much. It just does a sit and rotates and spins and doesn't do much except keep very cold air in the eastern United States. So this is your pattern change, folks. This is not transient. This is not going away. Okay, and uh, here's the current January pattern that we're actually the pattern we're dealing with right now. Okay, we have a split flow jet. You have one going north here, and you have the other jet going south. This is a split flow, and you have, of course, that storm uh, that we're being affected by right now. This is not a good pattern for getting amplification. I know it's cold, but you're going to get these trends. It is January, so it's not hard to get cold in here, even in a split flow. But you're not going to get any big amplified storms in this pattern. When you get into uh, the pattern near the 20th, look at the difference. You get the big ridging up here into Alaska and a big trough in the east. Okay, and that's this is the 20th. This is on the pattern change date right here. Okay, might even have a big storm here along the east coast, right about here. That could uh, that there's a pattern changing storm. I do think we're going to get affected by it in some way. We'll get that get to that in a second. But this is going. It goes on and on and on. I'm not going to sink. But this is the end of the month. Same thing. Look at how deep this trough is. Okay, so this is not going away. That's the point I wanted to make. And this is uh, very similar to the 2014-2015 winter analog. This is not a surprise either. We've been following this analog for a while, since November. It was spot on in November, almost spot on in, in, in December with the warmth. Here's January, turn colder in the northeast. I don't think it's going to be this cold here in the northeast when the month ends because we took a little bit longer than 2015 to change. And uh, change is going to be around the 20th. It is going to get brutally cold here. I don't know that's enough to offset the warmth we had thus far in January. It's going to be close. It's not going to be nearly as, as warm as, as it has been uh, above average anyway. But I, And I do think we get some, you know, definitely some below average days in the last 10 days of the month. But it might not be enough to offset what we've had earlier in the first 20 days. Okay, so that's where I'm going with that. So even if we do, it's going to be barely below. But look at February. February is really cold really cold and look at the scale i mean you got some minus eight to minus ten departures below average here now we went minus five to minus nine for february this year and i do think we're going to maintain that this week from last week so that's uh hasn't changed but i do think you're going to have a deep trough in the east ridging out west and you're going to have a very favorable pattern for cold and snow going forward now storm potentials we have one weak system coming in on Thursday night. This is going to bring us some light snow, maybe uh, coating to an inch or two across the region. This is a quick moving wave moving through that uh, both the European model and the GFS has. This is the GFS pictured right here. But you do have some light snow falling from that. Maybe some uh, light, light rain showers further south. This is on uh, Thursday night and Friday. Okay? Uh, the bigger one that everybody is worried about is the weekend. This is Saturday night, Sunday. A couple different scenarios. Actually, we're going to list three here. And because we're at this range, I really can't narrow it down for you. It's going to depend on the timing of this trough and when the cold air arrives. If it gets in a little bit sooner, then this is not happening, where it shows a, a system coming in and amping up and cutting inward like this. In this situation, you would have rain ending as snow, accumulating snow, but it would be uh, you know, a boatload of rain followed by uh, several inches of snow as this, as this moves away and around the backside. And it wraps around, wraps in the cold behind it as that uh, cold air comes in with the pattern change. This is the pattern changing storm. Could this happen? Yeah, sure, of course. But this is the GFS. All right, this is the GFS showing this. Scenario number two is you get a monster storm along the east coast and you get, uh, you know, some areas getting a foot or more of snow. Very possible. Just going to depend on, again, how fast this cold air gets in. This is the Canadian model. Brings it in a little bit faster. It's the latest run of the Canadian model. Uh, so the cold air is, you know, digging in all the way down here behind it like this. Here's our cold air with it rushing in. So you get a tremendous amount of snow right in here in the interior especially. Uh, but again, specifics aren't important right now. I'm just giving you a scenario. All right, this is primarily a snow event and a lot of it in this scenario. Uh, scenario number three is yesterday's. This is not the current European model. Your current European model is kind of similar to the... Uh, 
uh, Canadian, maybe a little bit further inland and bring some more icing involved in here. But uh, the other situation is that this remains far enough south and east so that just the south and eastern areas or nobody gets it. If it stays off to the south because the cold air gets in here too fast before the storm really matures and really wraps up, then it can it can suppress it south and east. All three are equal possibilities right now. Equal. Uh, we're only sitting here looking at this on Sunday, so you know we have all week to look at this. Of course, we are going to be discussing this in the Premium Forum this week. We do all advanced discussions in Premium Forum. If you're not a member of the Premium Forum, please sign up for that on the uh, My Pocket Meteorologist Winter Weather Alerts page. You can sign up for text alerts on that page as well. Uh, but we do discuss this in the uh, forum. We're going to start the analysis on that on Monday if it is still there. I do think there's gonna be a, there is going to be a threat here because the ensembles are really, really thrilled uh, for at least one of these three scenarios. And none of them, not too many of them have a miss, which is interesting. Most of them have a hit of some kind. It's just a matter of the timing of that uh, that cold air coming in that is with the pattern change that I'm talking about. Okay, and uh, of course we're going to be talking about this in the premium form starting on Monday. So if you're not a member of that, you want to get in part, involved with the discussion, get into the question and answer sessions with the meteorologists and follow along with our model analysis that we do, which is very comprehensive. Click on the image for the My Pocket Meteorologist uh, image below this video and it will take you right to that page where you can sign up for that and be a part of that. If not, if you don't want to be a part of that discussion, you just want to know the information uh, of how much you're going to get and when, sign up for the text alerts that will come directly to your cell phone. Okay, so summarize this. Transitional pattern this week, abandoning the split flow and getting into a more amplified flow with time. This is what we've needed. This is why we are not why we are not snowy and cold so far this year. Now we're going to change to that uh, different pattern configuration. Again, not speculative. This is happening. Okay, uh, watching. Uh, of course, I didn't write it through. Watching two systems closely this week. There we go. Uh, one week wave Thursday night and a larger weekend storm possible. And then pattern change to a sustainable cold one and hence for snow will be post January 20th. But again, if you get that pattern changing storm coming in here just right, something like this, uh, you can get a substantial snowfall before that. I'm talking about post pattern change, which is, you know, we have there's one signal right on the 22nd, 23rd, something like that. There's another one on the 26th, 27th. There's a couple different ones we're looking at. So that week after, once the cold's entrenched and settled in, that's when you get your storms. Uh, like kind of like a parade of storms coming in. It could very well be a parade of storms coming in, but we don't know that exactly yet, uh, exactly how that's going to transpire. You're going out a little bit far in time. They're just signals right now. But here is that pattern change. This is not a signal. This is coming. Okay, and the January, 20, uh, January 20th pattern change uh, could not have been better uh, analyzed in, 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 uh, in advance right around New Year's. So, um, you know, I understand people are skeptical. I understand people... Uh, doubt things because they hear things from other sources that are that were promising. Oh well, the end of the end of December is going to be great, and then it didn't happen. And then they said, oh well, it'll be you know maybe the first week of January. That didn't happen, and it kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. I told you, um, told you all that watched this video that January twentieth was the target date. That's been the date for several weeks, and it looks like that I couldn't have picked a better date with that. So we did get lucky, yes, in that regard. But there was things I was looking at that was pointing to January twentieth as the eventual date so uh, those things came to fruition everything kind of lined up and the stars aligned and that's what we're looking at uh, going forward so uh, follow us throughout the week again if you want to get a part of the discussion click on the image below this video we will be discussing everything in the my pocket meteorologist premium forum uh, beginning on monday and throughout the week as long as we still have some kind of threat uh, here, which I don't see that just disappearing, and I'm not just talking about Friday. We'll talk about this too there, but I'm talking about you know this storm here. There could be a bunch of different things, with uh, either rain to snow, uh, a heavy snowfall for some of our some of our area, or uh, maybe just parts of the area if it's too far south and east, or maybe nothing at all. But we'll at least cover those bases during the uh, the premium form discussions, and you can become a part of that uh, with us this week. If not with that, with the text alerts, and we will take care of you. I'm EPA, meteorolo EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 13th, 2019. We will have another Weather Weeklies video next Sunday, and it might be amidst a, a storm here at that time, but I'll still have it regardless. I do want to take a look at the uh, storm signals after that point because, like I said, once you have one come in, you're going to have a, a, a couple of them come in, and they're going to be wintry, not rainy after that point because it's going to be so cold. So, uh, very interested in next week's video, and I will see you then. Take care.